prayer motion is like at this point. Pretty proud. Uh, both of our, our players are assistant coaches. You know, and then as I told the team in there, I don't know why I'm getting so freaking emotional, but for, for the last four years, you know, all I heard was, well, if you win any games your first year, and if you win maybe two the second year, and uh, I had someone come up to me and just say, just before the game, say, four wins, that's a great season. And uh, we've always had our, uh, our, si our, heights, our sights set a little higher than that. And uh, we certainly, uh, I felt, didn't lower our standards for winning, that winning sets a standard for excellence. Anything below that's not acceptable. And so, uh, and I think you're seeing a team that's maturing a little bit. I think, uh, you know, in the past, had we gotten down at half like that and made some stupid mistakes, one would have compounded another and would have been able to recover. And uh, there's just a, a belief and a confidence on this team that's growing, I think. And, uh, and, and so when bad things happen or, or, you know, we had some really, I thought, crucial mental errors in the game, Especially at the end of the game, where we got a personal foul and had to, and then offsides on the kickoff, uh, that could have turned the game around. And so uh, we've got to clean those things up. As I told the team, be happy, not satisfied. And uh, and that you know the game season hasn't ended. Yeah, it was great to get the win. It was great to get to 500, and, and it was great to to get the home win. But uh, you know, um, if they think the season's over by any means, it's not even close. Get the ball, start the game, right down the field, easy five plays, score a touchdown. And we got a little harder after that, didn't we? Well, we knew that going in, their defensive line was a bad matchup for offensive line. And, uh, and it took us, they, they, they were doing some things um, with their linebackers they hadn't done in the past. And it took us, and the problem was, we couldn't generate enough offense to get two or three or four plays to analyze exactly what they were doing. We were three and out, three and out, three and out. And so uh, uh, it took us a little while to figure it out. At halftime, I thought, Again, I thought our, our offensive coaches did a great job of, of putting the game plan together. Defensively, we did the same thing. You know, we shut them out the second half. And, and, and so um, the, the nice thing is we're hanging in the game till we figure it out. You know, in previous years, last I guess previous years, <laughs> one on one, uh, <laughs> you know, things would get away from us too quickly. Even earlier this year, the game got away from us too quickly. And by the time we made the adjustments, uh, it was too late to get back in the game. And, and right now, we're, our defense is playing well enough. We're hanging in there, hanging in there until we kind of figure out what they're doing to us defensively, and then we can make some adjustments offensively. Talk about the play Keegan Moore made. Well, you know, Keegan, it's a big-time play. It was a little, uh, uh, it was a little uh, like a controlled slant where he goes up five yards and it comes inside. And, and uh, you know, we know if we get the ball in his hands, he can make big plays happen. And, uh, and he certainly turned it on, made people miss, and I think there was a good block downfield as well that sprung him, and he took it all away. And, and you know, we we probably got to get him into the game a little sooner. We, you know, uh, we tried a couple times, and the ball got knocked down. Um, but I think we've got to find ways to get him in the game. The flip side of, of Keys is, you know, he made a couple of crucial mistakes on our blocking that, that need to get better. So I'm not being critical. It's just uh, trying to give you a flavor for. Uh, the standard we're trying to set for these guys. While we're really pleased with these big play, heck, it turned the game around clearly. Um, you know, we, we've got to improve on the other things so that we don't get into a situation where it's three and out, three and out, three and out, and we're, and we're behind the half. Talk about Cole Mahler's effort. He got beat on pretty good out there tonight. Well, they're, they're a big physical defense, and that's, that's kind of, Cole kind of invites that just kind of the way he runs. He's a big physical runner, he runs a little high. Um, and he's more of a cutback player. He's a cutback player, which means that you know when he's cutting, when he's cutting back against the grain, there can be some people come into your vision and hit you that, that you don't see all the time. And, uh, and but he's a big physical back, and and he's going to get you those two or three extra yards, even though he's he's carrying two or three guys with him. Defensively, the team had a couple of calls go against them that were maybe iffy, and um, they didn't get their heads down. They came right back, made plays. Uh, Davion Belk with some huge hits. Don, Donald Payne limping around out there making 21, 22 tackles again. Um, talk about the effort that defense gave today. Well, I, I think the, the thing that's different now is if there is a big play, we just don't panic. You know, we just, okay, yeah, they got a first down. Okay, let's line up and we got three more to go. And, uh, and I thought we did a good job overall 
uh, I'd like to see the stats on first down. You know, we try to we try to stay ahead of the chains on defense as much as we could, and that allows us not to have to blitz so much. And I thought I thought schematically we did a good job. We came off his backside a couple times. Ryan Powers had a big hit on him, and I thought and I think I don't. It seemed to me as the game went along and the hits accumulated that it had an effect on him. I thought there were a couple times when he, he got rid of the ball where he didn't. I know his receivers were getting frustrated. Uh, because the ball was placed where it needed to, and I, I would attribute that to the pressure we had on him, and then, frankly, the, the uh, compound nature of the, the hits. How much does Damian getting pressure change the way you can call defense? Because you don't have to blitz if you're getting pressure with your four man. Well, it's everything. I mean, it's absolutely everything. Uh, and, and, you know, look at what we were doing, they were doing to us. They were getting pressure with three and four man, and, mm -hmm. and that certainly makes it different on the back end. There's no spaces in the zones to throw the ball and you can you can play um, a lot more conservative in the secondary and, and if the quarterback's rushing it or the quarterback's trying to find a place to go, there's no zone so a lot of times I'll throw it up for grabs and then that's what happened tonight. Three in a row, uh, two to go. Um, obviously in terms of attention you got a lot of guys that are banged up and this week I know you give them on the off. Is that something that as you go forward you may like to give them more time off to just try to heal? Well, we're going to look at our JV game on Monday night, and and so some of our younger kids are going to get a chance to play in a game which we're, we're committed to playing. Now we may modify it, we may shorten the periods, or or be running clock or something like that. But I think it's crucial that our young kids get a chance to actually play in the game because you can't simulate game speed in practice, and and, and <laughs> we have to play so many of those to allow us to bring in enough kids in, in camp. Um, but we're certainly going to look at it as a staff and uh, and and look at what we have to get done. Uh, the nice thing, even though we're traveling next week, it's not really a short week because we're, we're chartering up there and we play Friday night. So um, we'll have a, we'll still have a long week, but we're certainly going to look at that as a staff. As, <coughs> excuse me, as if, if we do anything on Monday, it'll be pretty minimal, just to just to try to figure things out. Donald Payne out there limping around, his ankle stepped on, he's taped up, and he got his hand stepped on late. He still has 20 tackles, makes a big, you know, two or three tackles for loss, a sack. It's just. Kind of phenomenal what he's doing out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I've run out of accolades. Um, he he just makes plays all the time, and, and he's always around the ball. And you know, he just got an instinct for the ball right now. And, and you know, playing hurts what you do. That's what this game demands. Especially if, if you're a good player and you're making 22 tackles, you probably hit someone hard, and then probably going to hurt for a while. And so. Uh, you know, I know there was one time when he was off sides and we had a third and 15 mm -hmm. and he jumped off sides to bring him back to a third and 10 and Coach Young says, get him out. And I said, no, 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 you don't want to take him out probably. Let's just keep Donald in there, you know, but, uh, uh, but yeah, he's, his, his play is remarkable and I think our defense kind of beat on that. We got maybe a little bit of an unsung hero tonight. I don't know what his numbers were and it doesn't really matter, but Dylan White and mm -hmm. started for Nacho, I assume Nacho didn't even play. Mm -hmm. Um, talk about what he meant stepping in and filling that void. Well, and that's what I told the radio station too when they when they uh, interviewed me as I was coming off the field. He was an unsung hero. Um, Nacho actually got hurt on Wednesday afternoon, and so it was kind of a crash course on getting up with the checks. Nacho um, uh, Ignacio makes all the play calls, all the front calls, all the blitz calls based on uh, the formations, and these guys shift and move a little bit, so there was going to be some complexity to that. And Dylan came in to do some extra studying, and the other person was we, we also moved uh, Lazier inside too to play Mike, and he made some of those check calls as well. And so I think the combination of those two, you know, uh, we played extremely well defensively, and, and I'm pleasantly surprised that there was no drop off. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't appear there would be a lot of alignment errors, it didn't appear to be we're out leverage at times, and it didn't appear that guys were not where they were supposed to be. So I attribute that to, to Dylan and, and, uh, and Dave both.